Hi folks, I'm quite fortunate in that I have my own man cave as I call it, um, dedicated to my hobby of wargaming. Um, my wife says it gets me out of the house. There you go. Um, but not all of us are that fortunate. So I decided to make a tabletop uh, wargaming table, modular, that could fit in the boot of a car, be moved around, quite sturdy, quite inexpensive, that you know you could use around your mates and your kitchen and then store it away in the garage or in the shed if you own. And then just bring it out when it's time to play. It takes minutes to set up. You know, a minute and I'll have this set up. So what follows next is a series of four videos on how to make one of these. I have an idea for other themes, but I thought you'd like to see uh, the steampunk one that I've done, designed for a war machine for when uh, mates come over to play. It's okay, catch you again soon. Hi folks, this is Adrian from Wargaming for Fun. In order to make this modular uh, game table, I've tried to keep the cost down so the strength of it is in the uh, structure rather than the materials. I've got a 4mm MDF board, which is going to be the actual surface. I've got four of those to make a 4x4 table. Uh, but obviously in time they're going to warp. They are quite flexible and with your models and leaning on it and things like that it is going to make it weak. So to reinforce it I'm going to first attach these beams. Now the beams will go around the edge, these will go around the edge to give it that reinforcing so that it won't bend. Now these are just pine beams and they are two centimetres by three centimetres. Uh, in the UK uh, B&Q do do a cutting service where they will cut the boards for you and I don't know how much they charge for an 8 before sheet. Um, this one I got from a wood merchant. The 8 before sheet um, was whether well, five pounds, so half of that is two fifty ish. Um, obviously, you can't take half a board back though. Um, but some will cut it for you. Um, others um, may charge you a small fee, but it does take out a lot of the grief. Um, once you have four of those, I mean, you could do eight. But there's no reason why you can't take the principles of this board further. I've then got these pine board, uh, these pine blocks to reinforce it. Like I said, these are two centimeters by three centimeters, and these are also two foot long, just under two foot, because obviously you've got the width of the blade when you cut an eight before sheet in half. So I'm going to fix those like that. And the way I don't know, is that showing on the screen? I think so. The way I'm going to do it is by using three screws and, of course, wood glue, one in the middle, one at each end. So I'm going to do that, but I'm obviously not going to talk through what I'm doing. I'm possibly tempted to speed this bit of the film up, or not, or just edit it out, because it is going to be me drilling holes, and once you've seen one hole drilled, you've seen them all. Easiest thing to use, cordless drill, and because um, 20 mm ply, 2 cm ply, is quite susceptible to splitting, I am going to pre-drill the holes first with a 2mm drill bit. These are 1x6 screws. Um, they'll come from the top all the way through and I don't want them sticking out the top of the board. I want this board to be flat. So I will count to sink them and show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to start drilling some holes. So, first thing I'm going to do is put two pieces of the 2 foot long wood, uh, pine wood, underneath the edges. And I'm then going to measure to make sure that I get one in the middle. So the board is a fraction under two foot. So I'll put one mark and then I'll probably bring the others just one inch in from either end. And it's 20 centimetres, so I want one centimetre in on those. That's the thing with being a child of the 70s in Britain. You tend to think in both inches and millimetres. Um, in my job as a teacher, it's all millimetres and centimetres. Um, whereas obviously wargaming is mainly based in inches. So I've marked those three holes now. So I'm going to drill them, careful not to go all the way through the table. Making sure that I drill straight down both directions. Now if you're new to this kind of work, you might want to put a bit of masking tape or a bit of sellotape, masking tape's better, on your drill so you know how far to go down. So 
There's those three holes. Ready for the screws. Now we're going to do the other side. Now, because those holes are in line with those holes, I am going to call that A. I'm going to write it in the corner and write that A in the corner. Next one. You're going to be B in the corner. That way I can link them up when I come to fit them in a few minutes. And that one's just under there to keep the height level. Make sure this is all correct. And again, measure down the line one inch in, middle 12 inches, and then one inch in from the other end. And then swapping back one centimetre in to make sure that it all lines up. I'm using a 2mm uh, draw bit, it doesn't have to be 2mm, the screws I'm using are 1x6, so you'd probably get away with anything up to 3mm, I wouldn't like to go much more than that with these screws, because then the thread won't be in place. So that's step one, I'm going to show you how to countersink the holes now. You can buy specific countersinking bits, if you buy the specific countersinking bit, great, uh, but I don't have access to any here at the moment. Uh, they're all scattered around the workshops, both of them. So I'm just putting, in this case, an 8mm drill bit. Just has to be a bigger drill bit. And then I just drill enough so that when the screw goes in, it won't be proud. So, To show you the kind of effect that we've got, there's the hole with um, the hing in them. When the, the head of the screw goes into there, it will lie nice and flat. Be careful not to go too far through the board, because if you go right through the board, that's it. Your screw won't hold and you'll have to put another screw in. So there's the board so far. I'll uh, put those screws in. Things to watch out for when you're putting the sides uh, onto the plates um, is that that edge there this pine here doesn't stick out further than the um, MDF. Other way around, you can probably get away with it if you're a few millimetres out, but not if this pine is sticking out. The reason for that is when your other board comes up to it, it needs to go straight to it. And if it's sticking out, then it can't. And you'll notice it will spoil the effect of the table. Now, the reason I'm making it in pieces is so it can be stored away and not permanent. Um, if you're making a permanent one, you build it out of all one board. The reason I'm making it out of pine and MDF is so that it's light and it can be moved around quite easily. So, once you've stuck all the sides on, you then have to do the inner rails. Now, what I've done is taken the two foot beams, and then for eight of them, I've cut off the distance that I need so that it slots nice and snugly into there and then that is ready for drilling and fixing exactly the same way that I did before. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, I'll pause the camera because there's no point in watching me uh, just lifting the drill up and down. And um, get ready for the next step after that. Again, one thing to make sure that you're not over sticking. So, I mean, you just hold yourself anyway, friction joint, but we do want to force it. That way the MDF can't buckle that way or that way. You know, it's, it's held in place by the pipe. Doing the second set, fit inside. Um, I don't want to drill just an inch because if I drill just an inch, I'm going to catch this edge of the wood and split it. So, what I'm going to do is probably up it to four centimetres, five centimetres, inch and three quarters, something like that. 
so that um, I've got plenty of room. I think we're going to go for five centimetres, two inches. Yeah, so I'll do that and then another one in the middle. Hold this plate and this plate firmly in place. I haven't glued it because at this stage I don't know whether I want to take the wood apart or not. I shouldn't have to, uh, but who knows what's going to happen later. So it might come to the point that I don't glue it in the end because it doesn't need it. If I glue it, that's going to be rock solid. It's not going to move. So that's the way I go. Okay, catch you again in a bit. Once you've fixed all the side beams in, as you can see there and there, then you end up with a nice sized 4x4 table. Now, the lines that you see here are exaggerated because of the um, uh, unevenness of the bench underneath. Um, there's also some bits and bobs in there. But you can see, if I turn one of these over, the frame all the way around, fixed in, holding it. Again, if you want to belt and braces it, put glue on, which will hold these frames. But these are quite light, I've been picking that up you know, just one hand there while I operate the camera with the other. And they, um, the strength again comes from the structure, not the uh, materials. I mean, some people, if they're doing a 4x4 table, might just get a piece of uh, plywood that thick and then um, cause all kinds of strains when they uh, lift it up and move it around. This is designed to be portable and fit underneath my table at home. So, there's the table. Now I've got to start putting some decorating on it. 